a thought. Bye bye. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 unsatisfying sitcom endings. You're not the only one to point out the illogical. <laughs> we're always sad when our favorite shows end, but for this list, we'll be looking at those times the sitcoms left us sad and kinda angry as well. Your comments always leave us satisfied, so tell us about your sitcom finale disappointments below. Number 10, Al. What's the matter, a dingo got your tongue? <laughs> Alf to Australia. Alf to Australia, come in. Some of the most unsatisfying series endings happened when the show's creators didn't realize they were making a series finale episode. And Alf is just one example of that. Alert LA, tell him to get moving. Oh, and tell him to keep a low profile. We don't want to scare him away. Gentlemen, get ready to go down in history. The final episode ends with Alf being surrounded by the alien task force and the words to be continued appear on the screen. That's my luck. I'm a sports fan among you. <laughs> you see, NBC had verbally committed to another season, but they ended up changing their mind, making what had been produced as a season four finale the show's final episode. Help! Dad, do something! Thankfully, fans eventually got the closure they deserved six years later with the 1996 made for TV movie Project Alf which resolved the to-be-continued cliffhanger. It's the least I could do to show my appreciation. Go ahead, Rockin' Wagner, do your thing. Number nine, Mork and Mindy. There's no place like Rome. There's no place like Rome. There's no place like Rome. As if a show about an alien from Planet Orc who greets people with a Nanu Nanu wasn't bizarre enough, Mork and Mindy got farther out with each season. At the end of season four, Mork and Mindy see their apartment destroyed by an alien named Kalnick. I mean, nobody can make us do anything we don't want to do. Unless they've got a great big outer space ray gun. Mork's magic shoes get damaged, and when he clicks them, they are transported to prehistoric times. Do you realize where we are? We're at the dawn of man. Cut to season five, and they have to keep jumping through time to get away from Kalnick. Well, that was going to be season five, but the show was canceled after they'd already finished filming season four. So even rearranging the order of the final episodes left fans with a bit of a never resolved cliffhanger. Come on, fella. Oh, I can't wait to take you home and show you on my uniform. Come on. Number eight, Will and Grace. I was gonna propose a toast to family. Family that loves you, and accepts you for exactly who you are. Boring. The cornerstone of Will and Grace was, well, Will and Grace. They were the titular characters and their friendship was the bedrock of the show. No matter what happened, they were a friendship that could withstand anything. Give him a call, it's his birthday. Come on, he's your best friend. No, 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 he's not my best friend. My best friend would have returned my call when I left a hundred messages begging for forgiveness. My best friend would have put aside his anger and showed up for the birth of my daughter. That's what my best friend would have done. At least until the series finale in 2006, when an argument slash perceived betrayal leads to the pair speaking but once over the next 20 years. Eventually, they find their friendship again when they run into each other, taking their kids to college. But the whole falling out storyline didn't sit well with many fans. Count of three. One, two, three. And apparently, it didn't sit well with the show's creators either. Because when the series was revived in 2017, the original finale was retroactively nixed and written off as a dream Karen had. I had the craziest dream. You were there, and you were there. You weren't. Number seven, Full House. Who are you, and why do you remember everything? It's my job. I'm your memory. Where the heck have you been? I've been looking all over for you. The final Full House moments were just what you would have expected as the show ended with a wonderfully, overly saccharine scene that had us smiling and groaning all at the same time. How could I forget you guys from my family? You don't know how happy I am to hear you say it. However, to get that heart-filling and tooth-aching moment, the show, for some reason, decided to have Michelle fall off a horse, get amnesia, and forget her whole family. <laughs>
This was way more serious than the show usually got and was an odd decision for the last episode. Although it did allow for both Olsen twins to be on screen at the same time when Michelle gets her memory back, and they morph together via some lame mid-90s special effects. Ready? Ready. Number 6. Seinfeld 76.3 million people in the United States watched the Seinfeld finale, which ranks fourth amongst the most watched TV series finales. Good Samaritan Lardy. Hey, crazy? Why would we want to help somebody? I know. Th that's what nuns and Red Cross workers are for. It was also the first time a regular series television show had charged $1 million for a 30-second commercial spot. And yet, to many of those 76.3 million viewers, the episode was an unsatisfying disappointment. It was horrible, horrible! While the idea of having the four main characters get their comeuppance for years of selfishness was controversial enough, the most unsatisfying thing about the episode was how unfunny it was. To quote from the Entertainment Weekly review of the episode, Larry David took the idea that these are essentially unlikable people and ran with it, mainly leaving out the jokes. Haven't we had this conversation before? You think? I think we have. Number 5. That 70s Show Donna's leaving town, it's the end of the decade. We should be doing something awesome, man. Something we have never done before. Or this. <laughs> <laughs> Losing a beloved main character is difficult for any show to navigate, unless that show is Law & Order. Losing two of them is even harder. What do you say the three of us jump off this thing one last time together? You're reading my freaking mind! Which is what that 70s show had to deal with when both Topher Grace and Ashton Kutcher left prior to and shortly after the start of the eighth season respectively. This is like my life is finally taken off! I'm moving to Chicago! The show brought in some new characters and managed to put together a decent final season. And, of course, both Topher and Ashton came back for the final episode. You guys, last one upstairs has to call Red a dumbass! <laughs> Unfortunately, the show provided a send-off into the 80s with an episode that wasn't quite as good as what it used to be and not the same as what it had been for the last season. Number 4. Two and a Half Men Please, Somehow, someway, Charlie is still alive. Okay, this is ridiculous. Trying to briefly recap the final episode of Two and a Half Men would be harder than Charlie Harper trying to stay faithful to just one woman. The episode had it all, from the revelation that Charlie was still alive to cameos from Christian Slater and Arnold Schwarzenegger. And this brother of yours supposedly died in Paris under mysterious circumstances. That wasn't all that mysterious. I mean, he was taking a lot of drugs and pissed off almost everybody. And while the majority of the episode was enjoyably odd and filled with references for the fans, it's the last minute that gets most people up in arms. You don't think that it's possible that the cops got the wrong guy, do you? Nah. As a man who appears to be Charlie Harper approaches the house, actually, just watch it for yourself, as the oddness reaches a whole other level, and series co-creator Chuck Lorre decides to end it all with what comes off as some sort of petty revenge fantasy. <laughs> Number 3. Moesha Chuck it, Chuck it, look what I found! Trash. A pregnancy test. The week of May 14, 2001 was a big week for sitcom pregnancy test cliffhangers. On Thursday the 17th, Friends ended its seventh season with the revelation that Rachel was pregnant. But who was the father? Look at them. Oh, and they're gonna have a baby. <laughs> uh huh. And just three days prior, on Monday the 14th, Moesha ended its sixth season with a positive pregnancy test in the trash can in Moesha's dorm room. That's not what is important. What is important is somebody in this room is pregnant. But whose test was it? However, unlike Friends, Moesha was cancelled after that season and we never found out who was pregnant or any of the other cliffhangers that the show left us with, thinking they'd be back next season. I, I need your help right now. I'm in really big trouble. Dorian, what have you done now? Miles has been kidnapped. There were rumours that some of the storylines would be resolved in the Parkers, but that never happened. 
Number two, how I met your mother. Even then, in what can only be called the worst of times, all I could do was thank God. We were told in the pilot that Robin wasn't the mother of Ted's children, and the show's creators have said that they did that right away in order to avoid the whole will they or won't they thing. And that, kids, is how I met your mother. However, in the series finale, after we find out that the mother passed away six years ago, even his kids call their dad out for having told a story that is more about his love for Robin than how he met their mother. Let's look at the facts here. You made a sit down and listen to the story about how you met mom, yet mom is hardly in the story. No, this is a story about how you're totally in love with Aunt Robin. Basically making the whole how I met your mother part of the show an afterthought. <laughs> The finale was so hated that they included an alternate ending on the DVD that cuts off before the part with his kids and the loving Robin stuff. I mean, how sometimes you just find things. Hi. <laughs> before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Roseanne In Roseanne's final season, Dan survives a heart attack and the Connors win $108 million in the lottery. Please, 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 stay, stay, stay. I beg you. I double dog beg you. Is that clear <laughs> enough there for now? I want to stay home with you, Mom. Or at least that's what we thought until the last couple of minutes of the series. With the final scene, we're basically told that everything we'd seen had been made up by Roseanne in an effort to cope with her husband's death. So, in my writing, I did what any good mother would do. I fixed it. But not just that last season. Writer Roseanne hadn't just made up the lottery winning and Dan surviving, but she'd also switched the boys her daughters were dating, made her straight mother gay, and made her gay sister straight. I think I'll be a lot better now that this book is done. When the show was revived in 2018, it pretty much dismissed the entire ninth season, which is what most fans had done back in 1997. Thought you were dead! I'm sleeping! Why does everybody always think I'm dead? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.